once you've settled on a topic, it's a good idea to, to write it down uh, and break it down into its core concepts and key terms. So uh, what we're doing here is in a bit more of a systematic way, uh, looking at what keywords you can use as you're uh, applying a search to a database or, or several databases. Uh, so you want to break your topic down to uh, its core concepts and then um, you know you, you already have been thinking about key terms as you've been doing your preliminary research uh, but now sort of arranging it in more of a structure so in a grid like this um, you can you can arrange your your key terms and think about some other you know what are other uh, ways of articulating uh, the concepts that make up your topic. So in this case, you've got a topic, uh, what is the role of education in promoting positive mental health? So um, whoever was looking into this topic uh, decided that there were three sort of core concepts that make up this overall topic. And those were education, uh, promotion, and then mental health. And then they, came up with synonymous terms uh, for each of those three concepts. So another way of saying or, or, or something related to education uh, would be tuition uh, and then pedagogy uh, and then maybe over in mental health. Uh, another way of saying that might be fitness uh, and then a more sort of trendy or maybe contemporary way of saying it would be well-being. So all of these could be used uh, in a search in a database or multiple databases and um, you know this grid can be referred back to um, uh, as somebody proceeds through those and you know your keywords um, they can change you know you can keep on you can keep on thinking of new ones um, take away those that aren't really very helpful uh, and then you could, you know, have keywords that are part of uh, kind of a larger uh, uh, list of key things, like key authors. You run the, uh, the same author multiple times. You decide, you know, at some point it might be useful just to do a search for a key author. Uh, and then key journals. So you might find that there's actually a journal that's very much focused uh, on a, a topic or a part of the topic you're working on. So it might uh, bear fruit at some point to... Uh, do a search within that specific journal uh, or, or even browse through that specific journal uh, for, uh, for items of interest. Uh, it's important to be, uh, you know, in, in, in terms of critical thinking, um, to be thinking evaluatively vis-a-vis uh, -vis the information that you are, uh, that you're looking at. So um, this is a kind of a tool uh, to help with the evaluation of information, it's called the CRAP test. Uh, and it's just sort of five criteria um, to think about as you're, as you're looking through information. So, um, so something as relatively straightforward as currency. Um, uh, be aware of how important it is for your, for your work to be, to be current, for the literature to be current. Um, how, you know, what is your time frame uh, that you think of as being sort of acceptable to include in, uh, in the, the review that you're working on? Is it a matter of, um, is it, uh, you know, five years, 10 years? Uh, what is the time frame that you're looking at? Um, relevance. A lot of the sort of uh, uh, tools that are available within the databases, um, you know, have to do with uh, with finding the relevant article. And it sounds straightforward, but in fact, I mean, it can be quite difficult to, uh, to filter out uh, information that is irrelevant, all the, the information that's irrelevant, but on the other hand, uh, chip out all the, all, the, all the stuff that is relevant from uh, you know, what can be vast collection of literature. Uh, authority, um, how important is it that um, everything that you're including is you know, peer-reviewed academic a literature do, do you are, you know are you are you moving outside of that uh, type of literature or not uh, and then accuracy and, and purpose so all things I have to think about uh, in terms of evaluating information and 
do be aware uh, of what kinds of sources there are out there, the differences between them. Um, you know, be sure that you understand what scholarly information is and what distinguishes it from other types of information. Uh, most literature review material will be scholarly, uh, but there are some fields of study that might include other types of sources of information. Uh, so government or NGO research in some social or health sciences, uh, possibly some more popular sources um, in some arts and humanities disciplines, just for, for example. Once you have some keywords that you're um, happy to sort of work with, um, it's a matter of applying them somewhere. And um, it's a good idea to apply them in, in multiple different systems. Um, and, um, you know, so you might, you might, you know, you, maybe you might go with, with three. So for just for example, you might use uh, Google Scholar, um, the library catalog, and then maybe uh, uh, one of the major uh, databases that are relevant to your discipline. Um, that might be a good way of going about it. Um, so Google Scholar and the catalog are very broad sort of entry points into the literature, uh, pulling in uh, information from, uh, you know, different types of information uh, from different databases. And then um, uh, the more subject specific databases are, are a little bit more focused in terms of their scope. Uh, so, you know, think about where it is that you're going to go look for these keywords. Um, uh, and you know, and, and why. I've been talking mostly about keyword searching, and um, so that's really important. But uh, these can be complemented uh, by what's sometimes called snowball or pearl growing research. And the one that's most familiar with people is going through works cited lists of key papers to find other key papers. Uh, uh, completely legitimate, very useful way of doing that, um, of doing research. Um, another type of, of, of this kind of research is called forward citation searching, and that's available in some catalogs and databases, uh, particularly the citation indexes like Scopus or, or, or Web of Science. So um, that could be a handy way of, of doing research. Um, it's looking at, uh, if you have a key paper in front of you, it's looking at all the things that have cited that key paper. Uh, and uh, so it, it's finding relevant papers in much the way that going through a works cited list would, would do that, but um, it's actually sort of going forward in time from whatever key paper it is that you're looking at rather than backwards in time, uh, which is what's going on if you, when you're going through a works cited list. Um, so there are some uh, you know, databases and catalog as well that have uh, features um, that, can, that can help you do uh, uh, both. Uh, and then the third type is, is subject headings. I'm not going to get into subject headings here, um, uh, but um, in particular, if you're working in the health sciences, um, it might be worthwhile just doing a Google search and seeing if you can find some tutorials about um, what subject headings are and, uh, and how to use them. And this here is just an illustration of forward and backward snowballing in the Inuit Galway Library catalog. So, um, if you look at the, this is a record from the catalog uh, for an article called Derrida and all that jazz. And um, if you look at the little red arrows, have a look for those. Um, the arrow on the right uh, is to click to see the sources cited in this article. So that's the works cited list. So you don't actually have to go to the full text of the article uh, to, uh, to have a look at that. Um, you can just click that arrow and it will take you to all the records of the works that are cited. In this article, and then the uh, the little arrows that are sort of pointing up to, and to, right to the left, that's the forward citation searching. So that's going to go to the sources that have cited um, this particular article. So uh, potentially relevant sources that are a little bit uh, more current than uh, this one uh, that was published in 2012.